Hi, welcome back to Unicycle Basics. This will be a slightly different video. Last week, I went to the Grisha Mulmi Challenge, a mountain unicycling event held in Switzerland. After a long bus ride, I started to assemble my unicycle on the train that would take me to the starting point in Pontresina. It cost me almost a full day to travel from Berlin to Switzerland. But since I had a great time at this event in 2019, I knew that I had to go again. I arrived at the train station, went over to the accommodation, said hi to all my friends. People were also busy repairing or assembling their unicycles. Then it was time to go to the initial briefing and introduction. Wir haben eine Mission, wir erwarten euch die beste Zeit des Lebens ermöglichen. Eure Aufgabe wird es sein, euch selber nicht zu verletzen und die beste Zeit des Lebens zu haben. Uh, for uh, 100 meters up in half altitude, you will get 300 points. For the same uh, altitude downhill, you get only 100 points, so three times less. And if you do one kilometer in distance, you will get an additional 100 points. Additional to the ascent and descent category, there is also a second rating, the Quings of the Mountain. For this challenge, you get a variety of tasks, some unicycling and some just fun, which you can do to get points. Each team plans their own route for the day. So my team, Ben, Martin, Paul and me, Finn, spent quite some time studying maps and planning the route for the next day. We decided that for a relaxed first day, we would use a lot of lifts, but we also pre-planned for a big hike on the second day. After a good night's sleep and a big breakfast, we started our day one. Our first bit of riding was just to the train station to take a train to Celerina, where a lot of lifts start to go uphill. If you're wondering why there's an egg taped to my hub, the daily challenge for Quings of the Mountains was to transport a raw egg taped to your unicycle. After the train ride, we did a bit of riding to get over to the first lift. Initially, it looked like a very foggy day, but soon we broke out of the clouds and got an amazing view. We did some uphill riding to get to the next lift. We met Team Kinscap, who had very similar plans for the day, except that they were taking the distance and altitude challenges a lot more seriously, while our plans were a bit more relaxed. We took a few minutes to enjoy the view, and then started our first real bit of riding for the day. Not very technically challenging, but one amazing view on this first bit of trail. A bit lower down, the riding started to get a bit more challenging. Very good. We also had to do a quick brake pad change on Martin's brake. And the egg cracked quite quickly. Raw egg doesn't improve your brake's performance. Let's take a quick look at the map. After taking the two lifts up to Pitznair, we turned left and made our way down to the valley again. Our plan was to take two lifts up again, but this time turn to the right and do a bit of a traverse towards the northeast. Uh -huh. We took a rack railway up the hill and transferred over to the lift up its nair. We saw the French team, Vroom Vroom Einreder, making their way up the hill, the manual way, while we ate and took a short break. At the top, we turned right and found some new trails to ride.
Despite technically being in a race, we decided that having fun is more important and planned around a bit at this water crossing. Yeah. <laughs> we then had to do a bit of uphill hiking to get over to Pitzpadea. On this traverse, we did a mixture of riding and hiking, depending on whether the section is uphill or downhill. <laughs> On our next break, we were joined by some cows. And also, I found this fun jump to do. Woo! Got back to riding and onto some trails with amazing views. After this nice bit of downhill, we turned to some steep hiking up Pitts Padella. Luckily, unicycles are easy to carry. I wouldn't want to push a bike up there. Mm -hmm. After a decent hike, we were finally at the top. <sighs> nice. The downhill turned out to be a lot more rideable than the uphill. But idiotically, I managed to throw my unicycle down the hill in the one section that I just should have pushed. I'm lucky it stopped where it stopped, because this was already a 30 meter scramble down the hill from the trail. Miraculously, my unicycle survived in a rideable condition with just a small ding on the rim. After that bit of a shock, the riding got easier and we made our way down the hill. Yes. We were happy to find quite a bit of nice single trails and when that ended Martin did a bit of brake coasting to entertain himself and to gain some points for the Queens of the Mountain category. We then took another lift up the hill, which honestly turned out to be a mistake. We were getting short on time and some of the team were getting tired. So after a short bit of nice trail, Oi. we ended up riding down an easy forest road. This wasn't very fun riding. Instead of going up with the lift, we should have tried to find a nice trail to our finish line in Pontresina. But we managed to arrive in time, drop off our GPX files to the judges, and Martin bled his brake which had been troublesome all day. For a bit of extra fun 
and some bonus points, there was an optional night ride. We rode it in a group of different teams, which was a great opportunity to ride with more people. The first part was nicely rideable uphill, with only some steep sections. I had to borrow a headlamp, somehow I didn't manage to find the right button to make it brighter, so I had to try to stay close to someone with a bright light. After reaching the top, we went down a fun and technical trail. Despite not being able to see much of it, it might be the best riding I've done all day. In total the night ride was 7.8 kilometers of distance with 250 meters of vertical gain. While our main ride was 41 kilometers with 1300 meters of ascent and 3500 meters downhill. Day 2 started with some bad news. Martin had got ill so he couldn't take part for the day. So after breakfast we left Pontresina as a trio. You might notice the big backpacks and that we're walking. There was no luggage service for the Diavoletza, our goal for today, so we had to bring some spare clothes and snacks for two days. Our plan was to hike up Pitz Languar and then from there ride downhill to the base station of the Diavoletza. Pontresina is 1750 meters above sea level, while Pitz Languar is at 3262 meters. We knew from the map that this would be mostly hiking for the first few hours. So Paul strapped his unicycle to his backpack so that he wouldn't have to carry it in his hands. Team Sattelschlepper had similar plans for the day and were a bit behind us. Despite not really being focused on racing others, we hiked at a pretty good pace and soon lost sight of them. That left doesn't take unicycles, and by hiking, we would make quite a few points. Conservative estimate is generally 300 meters of vertical gain per hour when you are hiking. We had easy trails in the beginning and put in some good work. So after one and a half hours, we had already gained 700 meters. During one of our quick food breaks, I did a few attempts at a uni spin for the Kings of the Mountain Challenge. With the big wheel and the handlebar in the way, I took a few attempts. Woo! We were starting to get fairly high up, so the pace slowed down a bit. Also, we took some breaks to look at the view and let the others catch up. And after about three hours, we reached the hut about 250 meters below the peak. We left our unicycles there and continued just on foot. Very good. The highest peak I've ever been on. And an amazing view in every direction. After three and a half hours, we were well in front of our schedule. The Kings of the Mountain Challenge was to prepare fondue on a peak. So we started preparations for that. The Swiss cheese was fairly spicy. We hung our shirts out to dry and enjoyed the view some more. On our way down, we met Team Sattelschlepper. 
They had played us a joke by hiding our unicycles. So we repaid them by placing a stone for extra weight in their backpack. If they still have it by the end of the day, that would also give us the things of the mountain points. No, do. Farther down, we ran into Team Nutzutrit, which consisted of five people. No. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and after that much hiking, we were happy to finally get onto our unicycles. Okay. Thank you. Easy riding, but fairly exposed. You wouldn't want to drop yourself or the unicycle down there. Since we had made up so much time, we planned to go to one of the lakes that would be along our way. The lake was very cold. Oh. We also built the stone unicycle and Ben pretended to ride it. We continued on and after hiking a very exposed section, we could ride again. Not only did this offer a fantastic view, the trail started to turn nicely technical and very fun to ride. Very good. Jawohl. Jawohl. Some unplanned dismounts are always expected. After filling up all water in a stream, I did this quick water gap. We ran into Team Pacific and continued down the hill with them. They continued in a different direction, while we decided to just end the ride at the destination for the day. We had some time left, but after regretting adding on more the last day, we just called it good enough. We took the cable car up to our accommodation, alongside a lot of other unicyclists, who were also finished for the day. There, our unicycles were stacked into a tower, and most people then went on to stare at the glacier that was behind the hotel. <coughs> that finishes day two for us. 1500 meters of vertical gain, 1200 downhill, and a high peak.
a good day out. On day three, we started early to catch the sunrise. Then rode on snow for some clings of the mountain points. And we started our hike up to Mont Paris. Hello. Come on again. <laughs> it's hard to not look at that glacier all the time. Team Pacific oh, had an earlier start, so we got to watch them right down while we were still on our way up. No. <laughs> Team Sattel Schlepper had also been earlier, so we met them at the peak. While they went down, we enjoyed the view and took off our jackets. Then we were ready to also ride down the hill. We also crossed the path with Team Danglish. We made our way back to the starting point, where Ben pumped up his tire and I tried to do a crank flip. Yeah. With those points collected, we started to make our way down. The downhill should turn out a lot more tricky than we expected. A lot of it was technically rideable, but with the amount of luggage we had on our backs and the amount of time we had on our feet in the last two days, it was hard work. I do kind of wish I had some video of my riding though, because even though it was slower than walking, I think I did some great work in some blocky terrain. We met Team Mountain Rockers and also took a quick break. Mm. And at the end of the downhill, we met Team Nutzutrit. Then disaster struck and I lost the nut that holds together my pedal. Annalena had the genius idea of using a valve cap as a temporary fix. 
all teams hiked slash rode together to the lake, and the Valve Cup fix made my unicycle at least somewhat rideable. But when that failed again, I decided to push to the next train station and let the two remaining members of my team finish the ride alone. Riding one foot to the train was not the way I was planning to finish, so I was honestly quite frustrated for a while. But there is no point in crying over spilled milk, so I kept my head up and remembered the great riding we had that day and the days before. And after a bit of waiting around, the first teams arrived at the train station and kept me company. I also discovered a little present that Team Zatteschlepper had left in my backpack. Ben and Paul also managed to arrive in time at the meeting point. And when everyone had arrived, we took a bus back to Pontresina, where the award ceremony would be held. This is Team Mu Ni, the new Kings of the Mountain. Then it was time for the Grisha Challenge Award. <laughs> Quite an adventure points, 45,221 points is Kins <laughs> Our team finished right in the middle of both categories. But most importantly, we achieved the main missions, had the greatest times of our lives, and didn't get injured. Big thank you to the organizers for making that possible.